Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. I'm once again looking at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comment section of one of my videos. And today I have randomly chosen the Dark Star Deep Space Gunship, which is this lovely thing right here. So this ship is suitable for one player and it is outfitted with a lot of weapons. It has got a ton of Gatling guns, it has a load of rockets underneath there, it even has an automatic firing system thanks to this little sensor right here. So when you get in range it will open fire and when they're out of range you will stop. The ship features both hydrogen, atmospheric and ion thrusters. It's got a survival kit on there so you can respawn right next to it in case you die. So let's start by going around the outside. At the front here we've got the fighter cockpit and above it we've got our camera to view where we're going without having the cockpit take up most of your screen. We have a sensor above it and sub hydrogen and ion thrusters going all around. If I was to drop down we have these lovely teeth at the very front. It looks like there should have been a jaw there to clamp shut on your enemies when you got close enough. And they just let loose with the rockets while you're attached to them. But no, it does look rather fantastic like that. Coming into here, we have a six rocket launchers which have been scripted, so they fire on a one, two, three, four, five, six like that before they go back around to the first rocket launcher. Creates a nice pattern while firing. Down below is the sensor, so if your enemy gets within range of that, the guns will automatically start firing upon them. And as we move around to the side here, you can clearly see the fiber skin all there in its lovely goodness. We've got even more hydrogen thrusters, some nice block work. I really like how this ship utilizes the skin pack, it suits it so well. Yes, as we come across here, we can see a connector underneath and a ejector at the back. So if we want to get rid of any unwanted stuff, we can do. In here, we can see the atmospheric thrusters being hidden away. So if you were to accidentally go too close to a planet, you don't have to worry at all. This ship is perfectly fine in all environments. Under the wing we can see a flashing light and above it we have got the exact same. Coming around to the back here we have got our main thruster which is one large hydrogen thruster, six small hydrogen thrusters and four small ion thrusters to propel you forwards. Above that we've got two atmospheric thrusters and below that we've got our landing gear. Moving over to the top we've got some more thrusters sticking out, there's a lot of thrusters on this. We've got a sound block. We've got a sensor and a camera, so this back here we have you see behind you. Then as we move along we've got the small cryopod with another sensor as we're in the little cryopod. We can see our system log showing us our power, the air vents and the oxygen tanks. And then coming around to the bottom we can see even more thrusters and that is basically it. It's a really neat little ship. It's very compact. If I press F10 and find it, it weighs in at 2,722 blocks. So it's fairly big, but it's all small blocks, so it doesn't take up that much room. So now it's time to take a look at what this ship offers. So number one and on tab number two are basically how you can turn the lights on and off. On tab number two, if you press it, it will start a timer block which will turn off all flashing lights, which is your stealth mode. If I come over to the first tab and press it again, the lights will then come back on because we are ready to engage the enemy, they know we're here, so it doesn't matter if we have the lights on or off. We then have controls for the sensors, so if you don't want it to automatically fire the uh, Gatling guns, you can simply turn that off. Then we got number three, which is the uh, Gatlings, so there they all are. All eight of them firing, so if you want something really dead, you would use this ship. Especially effective against large ships because of how the Gatling guns are spread out, so it would do a lot of damage to a very wide area. And then we got to number four, which is another sensor we can turn off, which is for the rocket launchers. So here are the rocket launchers. You can see they're all firing in their special pattern. A very nasty ship to encounter with the amount of weapons on it. Number eight is the uh, spotlights, which we can turn on and off. Nice red glow. And number eight is to turn on and off the uh, decoys. Number one on tab number two is what we just talked about. That's how you turn off the lights. 
and we've got a control here to turn other lights on and off. Number three is a camera to view at the very front, and number four is to activate the scanner script, which would be down there. So if I activate it, it will start scanning the area and will report anything back to me. Number six and number seven are the laser antenna on the top there, that little round dome thing that looks like a gyroscope. If I just come over to here, we then have paste coordinates and connect to coordinates. So if I was to say click that, click that, but I don't have any coordinates to track down, so I do not need to worry about it, but it's there if you need it. Number eight is to decrease the broadcast radius, which is like that. And then number nine, which is a missing block there, would be to increase the radius, but I'm not too sure why that is missing at its current point in time. Coming to tab number three, we've got the atmospheric flight. So if I was to activate that, that would start up the atmospheric thrusters and turn off the ion, keeping the hydrogen at the back there and all the way around turned on. If I was to press number two, atmospheric thrusters would turn off and the ions would come back on because we're ready to go to space. Three, four, and five, and six are for manual control over the thrusters. Number seven is to turn the hydrogen engine on and off. Number eight is the hydrogen tank for emergency power. And number nine is to draw in any oxygen into the oxygen tanks. Tab number four. Yes, this has a lot of things going on with this ship. It's a camera to look at the ejector. We got number two for the connector. Number three for the landing gear to turn it on and off, lock or unlock. Number five is to automatically deploy the parachutes. Yes, this thing has parachutes on it. And number eight is for the merge block up there. So if you were to create a little warhead and attach it onto there, you can just unlock it and send it on its way. Number nine is the camera to view backwards. Tab number five is just what I put on there. It's a rather small ship. It's got quite a funky look to it. I like the little, I do like the teeth on the front here. It kind of reminds me of like a screaming beast, like the galley guns at the bottom there, like the bottom jaw. It's just screaming at your enemies. Should go to fire all the missiles coming out of it. Ooh, that actually looks quite good like that, doesn't it? Yes, how does this ship handle? If I was to come into third person there and perhaps tilt my camera up so it's a little bit easier to see, we can see the first problem. I was moving forwards there for a little bit. The stopping speed isn't too great on this thing. So you need to make very sure that you've got enough room between you and where you're trying to dock or where you're trying to land to ensure you don't crash into it. But moving forwards and accelerating is pretty damn fast thanks to all those thrusters at the very back. Moving left and moving right is very fast much, much faster than any ships I've showcased in a long time. Pressing C to go down. Pressing space to go up. We've got a lot of speed on the up. Look at that go. That is a lot faster than moving forwards, it seems like. So you could just fly it like this. But as for that, the controls are very good, actually. It's rather meaty on the turning of the mouse. Then again, I do like a little bit of weight to my ships. But that is basically it for this ship. I've talked about the outside, I've talked about what you can do with it. And yeah, it's a very fancy ship to have around and to play around with. It uses no mods, so it is survival ready. It's got absolutely everything you need for survival mode. So you don't have to worry about attaching anything extra. You can just build this and be on your way. But anyway, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as per usual, it'll be in the description below if you wish to download and try it yourself. I highly recommend you do, because it can be a lot of fun to play around with other people's ship and blow them up or whatever you want to do with them. So thank you all for watching. I'll be back with another video somewhat soon. Bye bye.